This week's topic is something we're really excited to present, farm amenities. And our company specializes in providing farm amenities in an array of different ways that really helps us meet our mission, which is to empower a new local food system. We believe that for our health and the health of the planet, we need a new food system. With food that travels thousands of miles before it reaches our plate, combined with packaged, processed, and preserved foods that have become the norm, that are leading to a health crisis where five out of the top 10 leading causes of death in our country alone are directly linked to the food choices we're making, and environmental impacts, such as eutrophication pictured here, and just in general, the water pollution and water extraction that's happening from the industrial sized way in which we farm our food, we can't continue feeding the world this way. Our mission is to empower a new local food system. Literally, our vision is to see cities flooded with farms, providing freshly harvested, nutrient dense, sustainably grown food. This is an example of a farm amenity we have in Bushwick, Brooklyn, in a, bu a building called the Denizen. It's a 900 unit mixed use building with uh, several different amenities, one of which is a farm that we offer different models. One of our models is a garden plot rental where people have an opportunity to have their own plants, different revenue generating models so that they can earn money uh, or at least break even with the cost of the farm. We empower a local food system in a lot of different ways. As we were saying, through residential and commercial buildings, having farms on site. In commercial buildings, they're really great to have the food go to the cafeteria, or we can run CSA programs uh, where the employees have uh, freshly harvested food available to them. Uh, it's a really great value add and really helps corporations meet some of their sustainability goals. We offer these in schools, restaurants, and grocery stores. And what's really great about that is that when you're thinking about a farm amenity, you're actually going to be getting different educational programs. And uh, when you're thinking the schools and the STEM uh, value of that, um, plus if some properties have restaurants in them. Again, if it's a mixed use building, your property may have a grocery store, a restaurant, perhaps even a school included or built into it. So these are really great assets in an array of different properties. This is an example uh, and a design that we provided to an architectural company that's working with one of their clients to provide um, potentially a farm on the rooftop where all of that food would go to the grocery store on the main uh, level. So this is just one example of how farm amenities can be implemented in certain properties and developments. This again is the Denizen in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Uh, this is a rendering on the right hand side. This is the 900 unit mixed use building that I was telling you. And this is actually the plan and design that we provided completely complementary to really show exactly how much food would be, uh, uh, be able to be grown in that space for the people uh, and therefore how much money could be generated in these memberships through that model and showing our clients precisely what do you need to charge and the complete economic design of how that model can work uh, in your property. So it's a really great community value, but it's also a great value to the property owner themselves. This is another example of a farm amenity that we have in Manhattan. So if you're not looking for a rooftop farm, but perhaps something in your amenity space might be in your basement or somewhere else in the building, uh, this is a perfect example of how we can support you with that as well. This is a plan and design that was provided to show exactly that same scenario of how much yield you could make. Uh, and in this model, uh, our client was using a, uh, a, one of our all-inclusive models. So we have a ton of different models that we basically show our clients to power them uh, to be successful in their farm amenities. In addition to the work, working with developers, architects, and property owners uh, to start farms as an amenity, we also empower regional and local farmers uh, in how to start and operate commercial farms and start farms as an amenity in their cities. We do that by offering live, hands-on training. And actually, our next one uh, is going to be in a commercial greenhouse tower farm in southern New Jersey uh, in the early winter. So if you are interested in potentially being a part of that, you can uh, drop 
some uh, information in the comments and we can follow up with you. We're also currently developing a digital software platform so farmers will have access to business models, our trainings, and a world of farm and business resources like marketing templates and how to run the daily operations of your farm at your fingertips for a low cost. We're really working um, on getting this developed and have uh, beta testers that we're currently working with and looking for. Uh, so again, if, you're, if there are any farmers out there who are interested in learning more about starting farms as an amenity where you live, uh, then shoot us a note in the comments uh, section and we'll definitely follow up with you about that. How we are able to empower this local food system and support our clients with farm amenities is through the free planning and design that we offer. I've mentioned it before, but we literally provide exactly how much all the startup costs would be, how much yield you can make out of the farm based on the size of space that you have. Again, we tap into unused spaces like basements, like rooftops, and other space in the building that isn't really um, getting tapped into in this way. Um, and we'll show you how much food you can get in that area, what it will cost you to set it up, and the cost of consumables for an entire year. We really set our clients up to win so that they're successful and so are our farm amenities. We offer a farm service. So if our clients want us to completely run the farm for them, uh, we can, but we'll also provide trainings and workforce development programs. So if our clients want us to train their staff to run their own farm amenity, we can do that as well. So what is a farm amenity? A farm amenity is a fully comprehensive food growing service to engage and inspire your tenants and make your property or office space more desirable and profitable. Farms and gardens are installed in convenient and unused spaces that serve as a community and property asset. They provide the benefit of local sustainable organically grown food for urban and suburban residents. Where do farm amenities go? Farm amenities uh, can go on rooftops, basements, brownfields, because we grow hydroponically, you don't have to worry about the contamination that would be involved with that with traditional gardening, building lobbies, residential buildings, corporate buildings, sports stadiums. Actually, Fenway Park has a garden cafe where they have hydroponic systems, uh, the tower farm systems that we use, uh, uh, serving that garden cafe. So uh, really providing the, the freshly grown food for the salads and burgers and everything else that they serve. Um, airports, Chicago O'Hare has one. Uh, parking lots, planned communities, community centers, senior centers, nursing homes, malls, schools, grocery stores, as we were saying, and hotels and resorts. These are really great amenities uh, in almost any setting. So why have developers uh, and communities been interested in farm amenities? So these are some of the reasons that we've been told by our clients about why they're interested in our farm amenities. They believe that they're a cutting edge amenity that sets them apart. Uh, they believe that they help them sell and rent uh, apartment units or homes uh, and commercial space. Actually, uh, particularly in the Denizen, we were told by the real estate agents to keep the farm open. That uh, farm had opened uh, before people even had moved into the building. It was a new development um, that was helping uh, sell and rent the apartments in that building and for that property. So it was a really great asset, you know, multiple different angles and views. Uh, providing a cool place uh, where people want to live. Uh, that's a huge uh, asset, is really where people want to live, enjoy being. Um, and literally, uh, we were asked to make it a cool place. And there's nothing cooler than engaging in a farm and having fresh food grown where you live. Uh, creating community. So self-sufficiency and community resilience is a great reason to have a farm amenity. Um, it helps meet sustainable development and corporate responsibility goals, like we were saying before with uh, O'Hare Airport. Providing healthy organic food uh, to their residents or tenants. Uh, sustainable food options for tenants, employees. Uh, it's a really great way to have food in the cafeterias or restaurants in the property. Um, more enjoyable living environment. Um, and creating recreational activities for tenants. Uh, farming, again, when we can uh, get past social distancing, it is a great way to engage, go relieve some stress, uh, provide some personal enjoyment, and really grow some food and enjoy uh, having, uh, uh, you know, the reaping the benefits of what you sow, no pun intended. 
Um, and of course, farm to table community events uh, and corporate meetings. These are really great assets for your employees, but also your clients uh, in a corporate setting and create a tremendous community value uh, when farm to table dinners and engaging and introducing people to one another in a residential setting. Yeah, the, the one thing that I wanted to add to this was um, also increasing the value of a property. Um, so there was uh, several studies done that showed that um, the value of a property, you know, multifamily, corporate, whatever, actually increases um, often in urban environments when it has access to some sort of green space. So that could be a park, uh, a farm, um, and, uh, you know, anything like that. And it increased it by 15 to 30 percent, increasing the value of that that. Um, that property. So I just wanted to mm. no, add great. that. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that statistic. While we've been showing you farm amenities as urban solutions, uh, they're also a great solution in the suburbs too. Uh, some of them are called uh, agri-hoods. You may have heard of them. We as Green Food Solutions, uh, our farm amenities provide all the food and benefits of an agri-hood without some of those drawbacks, like uh, the expenses incurred uh, from uh, developing rural land. Um, our farm amenity model is modern, convenient, affordable, and it's modular. So it can be set up and broken down so that it can be stored away easily. Uh, we tap into unused spaces, maximizing the property, um, uh, where, um, and we're basically an all-in-one solution for community members, developers, and property owners. Agrihoods, you can see, um, are really developed, um, you know, around where the community is developed around the farm. And the farm amenity is where the farm is installed into the existing development or community to really complement it. Um, sometimes this really can reduce, uh, almost all the time, this can really reduce the cost associated with kind of using such um, a valuable property uh, or area of your property um, to have the farm as opposed to finding these unused spaces, which really make our models work. Um, so that's just one of the great things uh, we wanted to show you how um, uh, farm amenities are amazing resources in urban areas, but also in the suburbs. What we offer with our farm amenities is the free planning and design of any tower farm uh, or garden. Uh, we do the installation of the equipment and the automated irrigation system. We provide a farm service, which comes with everything required to grow your food from the seed to the harvest, uh, including the tools and supplies needed. Uh, we offer training. We offer customized two, five, or seven day trainings um, if you prefer your own staff to run your farm amenity. Uh, educational workshops, community events, farm to day dinners, revenue generating business models that show how the garden or farm can pay for itself to ensure your success, free greenhouse consulting. So if you are interested in starting a greenhouse on your property, uh, we'll show you how to navigate the different prices of greenhouses and what would actually suit the needs of the type of greenhouse you would have on your property meeting your goals. And cutting edge technology so tenants can rent a garden and watch it from their apartment. You're going to learn about a few of our systems that really go into some really cool ways that you can engage a farm amenity on your property. What sets a green food solutions farm amenity apart? I mentioned a few things before, but really the things that stand out uh, that make us really stand out um, in the industry are taking already developed land in urban and suburban communities and returning it back to green and agricultural space. We also work with developers and property owners to show different ways to engage residents in the farm and generate revenue. We are a fully comprehensive uh, system. We sell the equipment, install it for you, and maintain it or train your uh, staff. We provide community events and educational workshops. And we also engage technology as well as traditional methods to really make um, your farm amenity really cool, cutting edge, and a value um, within both urban and suburban settings. So these are just a few things that really set us apart as a farm amenity service. Now, Electra is going to go over some of the sustainable benefits and other benefits that are associated in having a 
farm amenity on your property? So some of the sustainability uh, benefits of some of our systems, which we'll talk about in a second, are really, um, uh, you know, I got into this uh, because of the sustainability uh, problems associated with the agricultural uh, world and really wanted to find solutions that were uh, related, that basically made agricultural uh, uh, production a more sustainable uh, practice. And so some of the systems that we use are aeroponics, um, hydroponic, and those systems often use um, as little as 90% less water compared to traditional agriculture. Um, it can also, because we're using vertical systems and we're placing these in places like rooftops and basements, we're also using 90% less space compared to um, traditional agriculture. Uh, when you're placing a farm right into a building where those people uh, in the building are actually eating the food uh, from that farm, you're also eliminating, completely eliminating the greenhouse gases associated with the transportation of your food. So if you've ever heard of food miles, um, that's like how long your, uh, your food has traveled before it got to your plate. Meanwhile, it's also touched about 26 to 28 different hands before it got to your plate. Um, so, you know, trying to cut down the miles as well as the hands that are touching your food um, and completely eliminating the greenhouse gases. I think uh, the average food travels about 12, uh, 1,200 miles, uh, 1,200 to 1,400 miles before it reaches your plate. So we can definitely cut down our carbon footprint. Uh, and then for one of our systems, the Organolock, uh, you know, soil and raised bed solution, um, this is also uh, providing a, a carbon sequestration. So through using biochar and um, by the, the, the way in which they make the soil, it actually sequesters carbon from uh, the, the, the atmosphere. Um, and then on top of that, when you're having more green space, in an urban environment, uh, you're also reducing the urban heat island effect. And this is basically kind of like the, you know, when it gets really, really hot in the summer times in the city, um, that's because we don't have any plants to cool down, to provide shade and provide something called evapotranspiration. So uh, this picture right here is showing, uh, you know, we're working with a client in Tokyo, so that's why we have this one. But this is a uh, picture of Tokyo, um, you know, heat map of to Tokyo from 1980. And then this is a heat map of Tokyo from 2008 to 2012. And you can see that, you know, over the course of 20 years of development, that Tokyo has basically become really, really hot during the summer months. And so we can mitigate that because we're taking these rooftop spaces, we're taking parking lots and things like that, and we're converting them into green space. And so cooling down this, the, the city, which also cools down um, your electricity bill for uh, air conditioning during the, uh, the summer months. Um, so these are just some of the sustainability of, uh, benefits. There's, I could go on and on about this, but we'll, <laughs> we'll move on to the social and cultural benefits. Um, so farms really create a greater sense of community um, and, you know, we, there was a study done by the Urban Land Institute that, you know, kind of talking about the benefits and challenges of uh, agri-hoods as what we, you know, kind of uh, learned about today. And one of the things that is repeated over and over again is that people are drawn to these things uh, because it, they're craving community, right? So they're was a time where we did talk to our neighbors and we had something to relate to uh, them. But now, you know, it's, it's kind of, we've been living in a fast paced world and it really gives people an opportunity to slow down, talk to their neighbors and have uh, something to, to relate to them on because we all have food in common. Um, we also, this is also a way to support local farmers. So, uh, you know, the average age of the U.S. farmer and uh, in a lot of places around the world um, is in their 60s and 70s, uh, 70 years old. And so by supporting uh, also young farmers, um, so not only are we supporting local farmers, but we're also supporting the next generation of people who are going to be growing our food because when the current generation of farmers, um, you know, leaves this planet, we're gonna have uh, a food crisis. So this is a way to support local farmers and actually give them uh, a, a living wage and a salary. 
Um, you can also improve the psychological well-being of urban residents. So just by looking at a plant, there's a study that says that um, uh, there's a great dopamine release when you actually look at a picture of a plant. So imagine um, the benefits of actually being in contact with that plant and you know, how that reduces anxiety and stress. Um, so there's great psychological uh, well uh, benefits as well. So just to kind of chime in on you know, the benefits to residents, uh, what's cool about this is you can make this culturally relevant, right? So uh, residents will have a say in what's being grown um, and they'll also have access to high quality food um, access to high quality foods means we have better cognition of building abilities, which means we are making better decisions. Um, and then we're also increasing the farming skills of the local community, which means we become more food secure and more resilient in the face of uncertain times. Um, and, you know, we're also improving their mental health and physical health. Uh, sense of community and also uh, they say that children who grow their own fruits and vegetables are more likely to eat them. Um, so this is a great way to get, you know, for parents to actually get their children to eat more vegetables. <laughs> um, uh, the benefits to farmers, so this is really huge. Um, and this is kind of the reason why I got into this in the first place, because, you know, I looked into, uh, I wanted to get into agriculture. I wanted to be a part of the green economy, but, um, you know, working in agriculture doesn't really catch you a very fair salary or wage. And actually the average farmer uh, or farm in the U.S. reported by the USDA uh, Fifty-seven percent of farms in um, the U.S. in 2015 made less than ten thousand dollars in the farm, which meant that uh, more than half of all farms in the U.S. are relying, you know, the farmers are relying on a second or third income. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a way that you can actually hire a farmer, give them a decent living wage, something for the city. Um, and it's also access to jobs for young and inexperienced farmers. Um, in regards to that, I just really wanted to say that as Green Food Solutions, we're really, um, we feel really uh, grateful to be able to provide um, farm amenities so that jobs are available to farmers. And as Electra was saying that while some of the um, current generation of farmers are aging, uh, the next generation hasn't been as interested to necessarily be in that rural setting. Uh, more people uh, and in populations are moving to cities and urban areas, and that just is increasing and increasing. So as this urbanization is happening, we're giving access to farmers a way to actually make a living in this urban environment that benefits the urban environment and suburban environment to have freshly harvested food that doesn't have to travel the distances that it normally would. So um, it's a really great benefit that normally hasn't existed for farmers. So um, particularly that obviously it touches both of us, given that's a community that, um, you know, we are very thankful for because they produce our food, um, whether they're farmers in this country or around the globe. Uh, farmers really help address issues in food security and you know that is a group of people that we need to uh, really support so companies like ours are designing these models that really give access to farmers to have these good jobs and then of course last but not least the benefits to property owners and developers um, so the the tower system but just having green space in a building uh, gives points towards LEED, WELL, and WELLFIT certifications. Uh, I'm sure you guys are well uh, aware of LEED, but WELL and WELLFIT are kind of now the global standards for green buildings. Um, farms are also a cutting edge amenity that address the desire for local, organic, and healthy food. And it keeps, uh, you, it keeps the property owner and developer ahead in uh, today's competitive market, um, where you know, plenty of luxury buildings have a pool or a gym, um, but, you know, everybody's charging the same rent. So with the farm amenity, you can actually, you know, make your building more attractive. And um, you can, it's a very uh, attractive return on, on investment. So like what I mentioned before, you can get as much as 15 to 30% increase in the value of your property uh, when they're adjacent to green space or open space. And that can include a working farm. Um, there's also tax incentives for small farms. There's tax incentives for green roofs, for green building, 
Um, and now there's also lots and lots of uh, USDA grants out there uh, beginning this year uh, related to um, urban farms. And so we believe that, you know, we'll see how that goes, but we will believe that that will be available to um, uh, urban farm amenities in the future. And um, some of the urban farming systems that we uh, work with also meet the, sm the small load uh, rooftop requirements of older buildings. So the tower garden, we know for sure. And then uh, the grow bot is also something that we believe is going to uh, basically meet the small weight load requirements of older buildings so we can uh, retrofit older buildings and that is a possibility. And actually to that point, even our soil-based system, when you supplement it to actually provide a variety of foods like a few root crops, potatoes, carrots, beets, turnips, you can actually not have to have an entire soil farm on your rooftop, which would give that burden of the weight, but just supplement it. So have these lower uh, weight um, requirements met by the hydroponic systems, and then actually also have variety of food by not having to put a full burden on the roof, but just section certain areas that have that loadability. So there's really great ways to actually use actually each of the systems, even in one farm amenity. Um, so we wanted to give people an idea of the cost of, um, you know, what this, what this looks like in terms of cost of installing, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the farm that you guys have seen a, a lot. Um, this is kind of like our flagship farm. And we wanted to give you guys an idea of what that costs. So all uh, 79 towers plus the irrigation system and fertilization system, as well as a one-year supply of hydroponic nutrients and growing medium, costs this building about $45,000 or $44,000. And, you know, in terms of the comparison of cost and uh, the fact that, you know, our consumables are relatively low, this is a pretty low cost um, installation and, you know, can something that can be incorporated later on in development, if not in the beginning. Um, the Waterline Square was going to cost about $11,590 for the equipment. So this is not including, you know, the cost for HVAC and um, installing the lights, but for the the growing equipment, um, we're looking at 15 towers and that also comes with the full year supply of hydroponic nutrients and growing medium. So just to give you an example of how you can also start small and then scale up over time. Um, we're also speaking with the South Street Seaport to get um, up to 100 towers in the uh, the new kind of like they've got a restaurant and entertainment center uh, concert venue and so they're looking to grow food for all of those local restaurants in that um, that district and um, you know with a hundred towers which could easily supply two or three restaurants um, they can you know easily install that for fifty three thousand dollars and that's something that you know in these development projects that are so huge this is nothing this is really small yeah. fries um, compared to kind of like you know the the larger cost of developing something um, but you know one that is also community um, engaging the community um, for the uh, 345 Central Ave um, in Jersey C City. This was something, uh, you know, we're still in the works, but with about 28 towers, they're looking at about $17,000. So this is something that we believe is very accessible, especially from the development level when you're looking at a way to be attractive, you're looking at a way to um, be cutting edge and kind of really fulfill that need, especially if you're a grocery store, to fulfill that need of fresh local organic produce this is an awesome way to do that so. yeah they'll recover I mean we all know what uh, organic food costs uh, and even if they make it more affordable and accessible through um, their pricing uh, they'll make their money back in no time on that absolutely um, so you know for the most part you guys have seen tower gardens and that's something that uh, we have been working with for about the last three years so it's something that you're gonna see a lot in our pictures and everything like that but in the last year, we've also uh, started to branch out, so, so to speak, mm -hmm. into other systems, which, you know, not every space or everybody is going to like the appeal or the, you know, the, the aesthetics of certain types of systems. So we wanted to branch out to give a 
a wider variety of amenity systems because as an amenity, you also want it to look good. You want it to be interactive. Mm -hmm. And uh, Growbot is actually a really great interactive system because what it does, it's, uh, it will take a picture of the, the plant bed every single day and send it to whoever is um, renting that garden, right? So we believe that the Growbot is a great um, way to do a community garden, basically inside of a building or on top of it, but really on top of a building. We have, there is an indoor model. This is probably better for outdoors to begin with especially because it's solar powered and the inventors and you know the the founders of this company are really really um looking to um create a system that is fully fully off the grid so something that is going to support you in times of uh you know crisis and 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 all of that so this is something where it's really cool that the solar panels take it off the grid and you don't actually have to run electricity to run this. Um, and then the watering is automatic. And um, so, yeah, we believe this is a really great system for doing some sort of community garden in your building or on your property. What's unique about the Growbot as well um, is that as a hydroponic system, normally you may have to top off the water from time to time. This actually it automates the water process that, uh, so it constantly fills itself. So if it's outdoors, you connect it to your hose and it'll trigger your hose to actually keep filling itself. So, I mean, it is completely automated from not needing the electricity with the solar panels. It's a really cool system and yields a great amount. Um, so the Organolock raised bed hardware and, and soil so something that, you know, this is kind of your traditional raised bed, but what's really great about it is that it is a kind of all in one. So the, the soil is kind of the magic of this system. The raised bed is the, you know, the foundation. So, you know, it comes in all different sizes, all different shapes. You can even get one that will support growing trees. Um, this is great for growing your root crops and veggies and the soil um, is, you know, usually when you're looking at um, uh, kind of farming in a raised bed or, you know, you're starting your, your garden, you're looking at doing all sorts of soil mixes, right? So some, you know, it's like 10% sand, 50% uh, topsoil, 30% compost, right? So like there's, um, it seems like it can kind of be a little uh, mind boggling of like how, you know, how to build the soil, how to make it perfect for the plant that you're looking to grow. And what's cool about Organolock is that they actually use something called biochar, um, which is taking uh, organic mass and kind of uh, turning it back, turning into a super bioavailable uh, nutrient like char that's available to plants. And so one of, you know, basically you just throw it in, you don't have to mix it with anything else. Um, and the plants just grow. And you know, we've we've seen from the people who've actually um, developed the system that it's extremely um, abundant. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we've <clears throat> we've visited their gardens. It's it's really cool. So, um, and you know, these things can run anywhere from fifty to four hundred dollars per unit, depending on the size and uh, which accessories you get. So they sometimes can come with feet over here, or you can just put them directly on the ground. Um, and it also has a vertical system. Um, yeah. You read my mind. Yeah. That was what I was going to say. <laughs> that um, what's really cool about the Organolock uh, raised bed hardware is that you can also go vertical. So it's ergonomic when you're thinking about a farm amenity. Um, you know, urban and suburban restaurant uh, residents don't really tend to want to do their back breaking work. So gardening is made in a fun, convenient, modern way. Uh, by using all of the different systems that we provide. Uh, that's why they're a really great complement yeah. to a farm amenity. And this is also great for people who still love dirt, right? So you still wanna get dirty, you know, hydroponics, you don't get as dirty. You get wet, but you don't get dirty. So with uh, this system, you really get to like feel the soil, play with it. Um, and that's great for, you know, just working with kids, especially and getting that um, uh, tactile um, experience. And so, yeah, th th that's what we believe that these are really great for. Um, they're super easy to install and um, unlike a raised bed, uh, which can take a lot of, you know, construction, getting construction. <laughs> yeah, getting late uh, lumber and I mean, and that can be fun too. But again, these are about having easy solutions, um, neat solutions and solutions, particularly for environments that um, you can put anywhere. So um, of course, there's a tower garden, um, and this is, you know, like the Growbot, is lightweight, 
Um, so it's great for rooftops. It's very easy to install. Um, we usually only charge $50 uh, per tower to install because it's very easy. So we, you know, there's a way for you to do it, but if you absolutely are just like, I just want you to do it, we'll mm -hmm. do it. Um, but we don't charge a lot to do it because it's really pretty easy. And we support um, all of our home-based clients, um, you know, in doing that as well. Um, so, you know, when it's uh, thinking of a tower farm amenity, we actually provide um, the installation for our service fee, but on a smaller scale, um, and this is also great for production. So like what we were mentioning before, um, when you're looking at the, the systems that are best for production are going to be your Ganalock, which is going to, you know, we, we can show a video sometime later about how much uh, uh, sweet potatoes were harvested out of one big large trough, right? So this is something, uh, the tower garden is also something that's really great for production. So you're looking mm. for growing a lot of food. This is good for restaurants. This is good for um, serving employee cafeterias. Um, cafes, things like that. Um, with the tower garden, you're also using 90% less land and water uh, compared to traditional growing. And um, we also have models where we can grow indoors, as you've seen before. The tower farm system is the most uh, flexible system we do have currently uh, from its modular vertical nature, as well as all the different features Electra just mentioned. And then this is a like one that we're really excited about as well. Um, this is called the Hexagro. So this was developed by um, an Italian company, and um, they also have a you know this is a fully customizable in size. Um, you can kind of go as like high or wide as you want. But what we really love about this is that it's super sleek and and has a lot of emphasis on design. And uh, the inventors are all about biophilic design. So you know creating something that mimics nature um, in order to kind of I don't know it just makes for a more easy experience. Um, it can, also kind of adds to the beauty of the environment as mm -hmm. well, you know, where these are, as Electra was saying, really sleek, sexy systems. And inside of that, I mean, you can have these in lobbies that look gorgeous, um, around furniture. Uh, these are fully indoor systems that um, would make any uh, commercial office or uh, residential lobby or lounge area look stunning. Um, and it's also productive and, you know, all that food can be harvested and used in a productive way for the residents or restaurants, cafes, and like that. Yeah, and similar to the uh, GrowBot, this is a system that also has an app, right? So it, it engages you more than one way. It'll give you, um, you know, environmental measures and um, engage you to let you know, hey, your basil might be ready to be harvested. You know, it's been uh, a month and a half, right? So this is something that is meant to truly engage people and get people to gather around. And we think, like Mary said, would be great in lobbies and in uh, indoor community spaces. Mm -hmm. So that pretty much sums up everything. Um, and so I guess now is a good time that we'll start to take questions. Have any questions about the systems, about farm amenities, the difference between agrihoods mm -hmm. and farm amenities and uh, anything, uh, feel free to chime in. Yeah, if you're interested in actually um, getting a farm amenity or exploring that uh, with our free planning and design, you can also just kind of shoot a comment into the space and we'll follow up with you so that we can get your exact dimensions and, um, you know, make sure that we can provide you with exactly what those startup costs would be, what your yield would be, and cost of consumables for the year. You know what's cool, not a question, but a comment. Yeah. What's cool about the, the tower is that there's no weeding. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> weeding, like Very you know, cool. stay on top of your garden, the weeds will take over. Yeah. So yeah. it's just harvesting, right? Yeah. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Um, I mean seeding. Uh then in the transplant video, you were in that uh, session as well. You just kind of take the plug and pop it into the the the, the port is what it's called. Mm -hmm. Watch it grow. Um, which can be the most painful part for me because you know I'm impatient. And then <laughs> <laughs> and then uh harvest it yeah nice quick question i know you guys have installed a tower farm in other countries in the past when is it safe to tra when it is when it's safe to travel again are you guys still open to doing that particularly in nigeria yes um yeah so we're totally open to installing farms in other countries uh recently um we worked with a client to uh get 
a bunch of towers to in was it no it was kenya it was in kenya uh in nairobi and they bought more than 80 towers and they're going to be doing some sort of leasing model i believe um Mm -hmm. but that was i guess right before the pandemic and we didn't install them ourselves they were just sent over there Mm -hmm. um but yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. And again, so we would be able to install them for uh, uh, any location. Uh, and that's a really great question. Thank you for asking it. Yeah, and I guess, you know, I wanted to show you guys the, the AgriHood thing because um, that was really what was a turning point for our business when we learned about the concept of AgriHood. Um, but then realizing that, you know, a lot of these are these pre-planned developed communities. Um, and uh but this is really kind of like the idea behind our business is like you know we, these food colonies right so it's like you want to start uh incorporating food growing into the local environment and then okay what do we got a uh, follow-up question um uh is were there any issues with exporting the tower to india um so we the only issues with exporting the tower internationally at all can be the shipping costs so uh, when you are considering taking um, uh, a tower farm, uh, particularly as you know you were inquiring about, to any place um, uh, internationally, it's manufactured in the United States in Tennessee, so it will ship from there. So what we do to help navigate that process is show exactly what it will cost. And actually, um, I know right now that that particular company is offering some subsidies for shipping inside of Europe. Uh, they're doing a promotion there, so that could be something people could take advantage of for Europe internationally, but that's not available everywhere, obviously. Um, so, uh, And we th- can ship all over the world. But we can ship all over the world. Um, but shipping would probably be the one caveat uh, or um, issue if, uh, if there were any. I hope that helps and answers your question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Thank you very much. Um, next week, uh, we do have another Grow Food at Home Easily series. Um, and this one actually is concentrating on commercial farms, uh, starting a tower farm of your own for commercial purposes. So virtually be there. 